premiums have risen wholesale substantially on the on the thousand ounce bars and yeah typically whole size would have 20 or 30 and stock might have two three well hello there my friends chris mark is here with you for arcady economics as we continue on our coverage of the silver world and today I'm quite fortunate to be joined by a silver retailer and a silver wholesaler to give us an update on what's going on in the physical level of the market. Obviously, we've seen premiums on the high side, even as the spot price on the COMEX slightly below $20. So fortunate to have Ian Everard of ARC Silver Investments joining me, who will be commenting on the retail side and Jim Forsyth of Silverback Precious Metals, who's actively involved on the wholesale side. And great to have both of you with us here today. Ian, how are you doing, my friend? I'm good. Thank you, Chris. All the better for seeing you. Well, that's kind of you to say that. And Jim, nice to have you back on the show. And uh, I know you've been busy slicing up some silver again today. So great to have you back on here and looking forward to hearing more about what you've been up to. How are you doing today? I'm doing excellent. Yeah, I got a little silver shavings on my shirt got to recycle them well i guess that's one of the joys of being a silversmith which you've gotten involved with and by the way i'd like to mention before we get started both of you are going to be joining us for silver fest coming up on saturday november 12th where people will be able to join us talk with a lot of the guests that we have on the show including ian and jim also ask questions directly so sign up link for that in the description field below excited you'll both be joining us there because obviously an interesting time in the silver market the paper price been dominated by the fed's interest rate hikes and we've seen a lot of hedge funds selling the price down from the 26 dollars and change that we saw earlier this year although ian perhaps we can start by digging in with you onto the retail market where People are still facing some significant premiums. A lot of products are harder to get right now. And perhaps you could catch us up on what you're seeing on the retail level and what we're looking at there. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, just premiums are still rising um, on everything. The only product that we buy that the premium hasn't risen is the 35% silver war nickel. Everything else has gone up and some items substantially. Um, so we've gone on retail markup on so 2022 Britannia from four dollars. Now we're in the in the eight dollars. I mean that's a huge percentage increase. Um also 10 ounce bars, kilo bars, hundred ounce bars, and supply is Ever harder, ever harder to find. There's less choice available to get some, and, and usually there used to be a deal. You could find a deal, so you could switch to an Adir bar or Valcambi bar or a Pamp bar. You could find something that was good value. Now, I think Mr. James Forsyth is the only stuff that's a good value, <laughs> and that's, he's making it, slicing it, and casting it, and yeah, and. I predicted it when I first met Jim in New Orleans last year. I remember telling him, you do know how busy you're going to be, don't you? Yeah, definitely very busy. Yeah, you missed you miss one product wholesale prices haven't gone up. The slices. Yeah, <laughs> slices are, are stayed the same. But yeah. but but we're yeah. selling more of them, which was which, which was the entire plan was do something that scales well, so that when mint, mint capacity can't keep up, that we have a product. Not all our products. We have one A product that um, we can scale up production versus scaling up premium. Yeah, and Jim, could you talk a little bit about what you've been doing? I know in the last year, primarily, you've you've started getting the thousand ounce bars and making your own products. Uh, but before we dig into the wholesale market, could you just lay out for folks the process that you're going through and some of the products that you're making? Yeah, so um, started about a year ago, and it's, you know, I'm not the only person in the company. It's a partnership. Um, Dave Holland is the other managing uh, partner. Uh, we've got a number of other partners, but we started doing slicing. Um, that was the main thing. And then we had to do something with the shavings. So we started doing hand pouring of the shavings into those 10-ounce rounds. And um, 
you know, I, I was working on the production end versus the, the marketing and sales. And I was like, this is a lot of work. So I decided on my own, um, Forsyth Engineering to go uh, buy a bunch of casting equipment, vacuum casting um, to increase the productivity. Um, so now we're able to vacuum cast um, about four to 5,000 ounces a, a week um, into 10 ounce, five ounce bars. Um, we don't have the five ounce bars in production yet, but uh, you know, 10 ounce bars, five ounce bars. Um, and about yeah, four to five thousand. So, because because what happened is we were we're just re, you know doing the shavings into rounds, and then we wound up getting orders for you know two thousand ounces of pounds. But that was a tremendous amount of work. And then at some point we started started switching to wholesale, um, and that that transition is complete. And that kind of caught the eyes of Kinesis. Um, they were standing up a physical mint, and now we're the North American distributor for uh, Kinesis physical mint products and. Got uh, 70,000 ounces coming in, I think, this Friday. So you're seeing some increased activity on your side as well, it sounds like. Yeah, so we're kind of a bad, um, we ourselves are kind of a bad, uh, or not a reliable indicator, because at the same time as, you know, we're basically ramping up, you know, adding Kinesis, the mint, that mint is ramping up. Um, the, the casting really only fully came online last month. So we would be seeing a lot of increased sales anyway. And we, our outreach is also greatly increased. We got under round table, which is a great, um, dealer to dealer network. Um, Ian's been helpful makes making some connections. And so we're ramping up anyway, but we do see it in the dealers that we talk to too. We have particular, one of the ones that went the furthest back, he, he would order about a hundred 10 ounce rounds, um, 200 maybe once a month um and then he he got to where he he bought a, a, another 100 sold out in a week he has 200 on order and and now he's just i want 100 a week just keep them coming uh they sell out so quickly so and, and you know a number of the dealers we talked to same same story um just have, having a hard time getting product especially the one ounce rounds a lot of the wholesalers that is um you know late november so we're trying to be careful. We actually, some of the guys went to a, con, a, a, a coin show and they talked to a couple of people and then they stopped talking to people because they realized we've pretty much sold, we're going to be able to sell out of the next shipment. We don't want to go get a bunch of new clients and then not be able to get them the product they want. So um, we're trying to be careful about scaling up slowly so that we can always have product available because, um, you know, we, we don't want, we don't want two, three months delays. And um, I think Kinesis is going to help get us there. Having our own production helps us get us there. We can fill the gaps with the slices, which was was always the plan. Um, so yeah, really exciting. It's, I mean, if I told you the numbers we've increased this, it's, it's an order of magnitude from this month to last month, maybe a factor of 20 in terms of sales. Well, I'm not entirely surprised to hear that because a lot of the dealers I talk with, they mentioned that when they speak with their wholesalers, a lot of products they're told to check back in November, check back in 2023, and a lot of things just simply aren't available. Is that what you've been seeing on the wholesale side as well, where it's it's just if you want to if customers or you want a specific product, it's just getting harder and in some cases not possible to do right now. Yeah, and Ian's actually really in, in tune with that market. I mean, we we see some of the other wholesalers. Um, we keep an eye on what they're doing in terms of competition. But yeah, you know, it's, um, you know, late November for getting product. The premiums are through the roof. Um, so so we've been, you know, our, our prices are lower than the other wholesalers, yet we're trying to always have product available. We, we, that That's where we're trying to distinguish ourselves is, you know, but it, it, it's, it's, it's like you feel like a drug dealer sometimes. You're like, you get a call. It's like, hey, I hear you got some stuff. You got some yeah. stuff for me. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's coming in next week. Um, it, it really is like that now. It's like people scrambling, and we we are having to limit orders. Um, so this next shipment coming in, we we got a feel for what people, how much people wanted, and we're having to tell um, you know one or two monster boxes um, is is all we can do this shipment. 
And and before we get to you, Ian, on what you're seeing from the wholesalers, Jim, any any thoughts on what it's like in the thousand ounce bar market where you're directly involved there? Is it getting harder to get the thousand ounce bars or what are you seeing on in that segment? Yeah, so um first off, acknowledge Ian uh, has been a a bar provider for us. Um, we're not currently getting a lot of bars from him um, just because we have a relationship with Golden Eagle and, and they can get them delivered in bulk and it's a local pickup. Um, but we have had a few scares. I know Ian started having problems getting thousand ounce bars and he can talk to that. Um, we did have, I, I think getting them from Golden Eagle, I thought they were coming once a week, now it's twice a week. And then, you know, the last shipment was delayed and I was starting to get a little, little scared. Um, it, it, but we we had done a transaction where we swapped a, a private seller, eighteen bars. So that gave us a backup. Um, so we've been drawn from those. Um, but but had a good talk with Golden Eagle, and you know they're really going to do all they can to keep us well stocked, um, including you know they're they're floating the inventory. In other words, they're buying them in advance of us ordering them, knowing what our production numbers are. Um, but we also have gotten interest from private sellers and that, that might be the backup plan is if we're, if we are unable to buy them, just open up the market and say, Hey, anybody want to supply us with bars, we'll turn them into product for you. And again, what are you seeing in terms of the thousand ounce bars right now? A, a dramatic change. Um, I used to be able to order them 24 hours a day, unlimited quantity even over the weekend fix sometimes it's shut off on the weekend from one wholesaler another wholesaler would typically have a hundred in stock in new york you'd even have the bar weights so you could choose your weights they'd tell you what whether it was royal canadian mint or you know whatever the the, the mint was you could choose um two weeks ago that all rapidly changed they asked for a hundred bars from royal canadian mint they got 40 those 40 were didn't even reach their vault. They sold them for, before they even came in. Um, so premiums have risen wholesale substantially on the on the thousand ounce bars. And yeah, typically wholesalers would have 20 or 30 in stock, might have two, three, seven. And I do a lot of private sales where people will buy 10 or 20 or 30 thousand ounce bars just to get that low premium particularly people often have built up a, a stack and the smaller, you know, the one ounce, 10 ounce bars, they want to bring down their price per ounce. And I can really strongly recommend that if, if your budget will run to one, because now through Jim, we have the facility to process them. The argument before is, well, what do you do with this thousand ounce bar when you want to sell it? But that's not an issue now. And we at Arc Silver have kindly been given a franchise to, to slice licensed to slice under silver black and we're setting that up as soon as soon as we can so we can increase the production that way and we're also looking um maybe to set up uh, a casting operation underneath james over oversight mm -hmm. because i can see that he's going to be if he works eight shifts seven days a week sorry three three eight hour shifts seven days a week he he's he's going to be um for up to full capacity um you, you look at the premium difference now a lot of the online guys they're like a six dollar premium on a 10 ounce bar um we're retailing our own arc bar that jim makes and the silverback 10 ounce cast bar it, it's got a three dollar in front of the, the price not six dollar on the premium um i think when the word gets around that you can save thirty dollars on a 10 ounce bar the demand is is yeah we're gonna have a job handling the demand and obviously the whole when i met jim i was so excited that somebody was doing gonna do something different to, to bypass the bottlenecks you know that from, from the mints of supplying to retail so then the premiums get pumped upwards it, it seems so unfair when spot is so low that the total price now is more than when spot was higher yeah and ian you yeah. mentioned or go ahead jim Oh, I was going to say, I, yeah, totally agree with Ian. Um, even though I'm a wholesaler and I benefit from high premiums, you know, if you want to avoid paying high premiums, if you can afford to get a thousand ounce bar, you know, get it and, you know, at a good premium and Ian's a great source for that. Get the bar, hold on to it when, when, you know, things calm down, 
you'll be able to get it turned into other product. And for yeah. us, it, it that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to cast it or slice it for you um, because we always have people buying the cast and slice cast products and slices. If, if people are interested in our other products from Kinesis, we can do a swap there and then use that bar for, uh, you know, to sell uh, our, our other products to other people, if that makes sense. That's what this other guy did is he traded 18 bars for 18,000 ounces of the Kinesis products premium. And we've just been drawing on those bars uh, to, to sell to others. Okay. And Ian, in terms of the thousand ounce bars, you mentioned the conditions of getting it from a wholesaler. I know you've also taken bars from the Comex. How do you compare the two options? And if, if it becomes a problem getting bars from the wholesalers, do you go back to the Comex or how does that work? Well, I use one wholesaler and that's their route. They, they take contracts every week. Um, my concern is at some point, the Comex is going to run dry. Um, and just the North American stacking market is going to do that. Um, I think there's roughly 700 million ounces of silver left on the COMEX in dollars. Sorry, $700 million worth. That's If every American spent $2 on silver, that's the COMEX emptied. So if one in 10 Americans that's spend $20... Or one in a hundred spend two hundred dollars, or one in a thousand spend two. It, it's not not a lot left now. Um, so my concern is getting it, but you know, by uh, standing for physical on the contract is when you really at the point it, when it's close to running out, and you've got all of the insiders will be grabbing all the physical that it can get. You'll get your dollars back when silver is going up two, three dollars a day. You might get settled at twenty five dollars. But when you get your when you get your money back, silver's thirty five, and then you haven't got your silver. You just got your crappy dot. Sorry, you got your you you got your fiat currency back. Um, so we we are, in my opinion, months away from running out of silver. Yeah, and we've seen the registered amount on the Comex down to thirty six million ounces. Ian, do you think that some of that? reduction in uh, the registered stockpile is now by wholesalers trying to meet retail demand? Yes. Well, I've been told by two major wholesalers that they, and also they got daily relationship with the mints, that the mints are taking contracts because that is less costly now than buying it straight from the refiners or the refiners haven't got it. So the mint might say to the refiner, we want 20 bars or 50 bars. And they say, well, we haven't got it, or you've got to wait two months or three months. So there's a bottleneck on turning the mine product into 1,000-ounce bars. And my suspicion is, going back to last year, that the mines aren't supplying enough for the, for the, for the demand for the, the, the refiner's 1,000-ounce product. Um, so if that's the case... We, we've got to squeeze from all, all angles. We've got to squeeze on mine supply getting refined into the 1,000-ounce bars. We've got demand exceeding supply on the 1,000-ounce bars, and we've got the COMEX being emptied. And not, not only is it being emptied, I can't see how they're actually going to find any silver to put in at the other end. I mean, unless they, they lie like they did last time and said 78 semi-loads semi of silver were loaded in in a, in a day which was impossible. And again, I think it's highly likely that some of those ounces are double counted or hypothecated or, or never existed in the first place. So it sounds like you're saying this is starting to become a problem with the available amount of silver, not just a bottleneck delay of not enough refiners yeah. or, or a particular coin being not produced yeah. enough. Yeah, yeah, because there's when when there's an arbitrage, when a premium gap opens up, people will rush to fill it if it's available. You know, we've got the situation, haven't we, in India paying a huge premium on gold over New York prices. Well, people would be trying will be flooding in to fill that arbitrage, but the gap is still there. So if there was so much silver floating around, people would be filling that that gap you know, where the manufacturers used to buy it at spot. Now they're paying 80 cents, 90 cents to, to get a thousand ounce bar on the open market. And that's pumping up the the wholesale price um, because the wholesalers, 
will buy from the open market and they'll buy, you know, from contracts. So if there was so much available, surely people would be just taking huge amounts off the COMEX and you, you'd be, you know, you'd just be creating wealth effortlessly. So Chris, you were, you were asking about taking from the COMEX and yeah, Ian is buying from wholesalers. So are we, we're not, we're not directly doing it off the COMEX. They're getting them for us. Um, but we did have a, a, a you know, wealthy friend who is trying to pull a Ravi and, start uh, getting stuff off the COMEX and deliver to us. Um, he was going through RJO, who has traditionally done deliveries. Um, so he got contacted back saying um, that, that basically they, they'll let them hold silver in the vault, but they stop physical loadout after COVID-19. <laughs> um, the message was client can only take delivery assignment, then hold in the account to tender issue at another point in the future, as opposed to taking actual physical loadout. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so he, he does have contacts with another firm um, that is going to try to help him out, um, actually take delivery. And he, he's wanting to start becoming our supplier by doing that. So he was so. told that he can't take physical delivery of the bars. That's correct. He, he can hold them in the account. Oh, and there's some fees to holding in the account, of course. Um, he can hold it in the account, but he can't take delivery. He can get it at some point in the future. For, for that particular company, they put that policy in place um, after COVID and it has remained. Um, but it's kind of funny because, you know, COVID's not really a big thing these days. But sure. a, a thousand ounce bar, of course, is the biggest cause of COVID spreading, isn't it? I mean, just yeah, that's right. <laughs> think how well that virus will propagate on a silver surface. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but it reminded me when I was talking to one of these dealers that had been around a long time, I asked them like, to be this market seems really hot. You know, how do you compare it to times in the past? Is this like the strongest market ever? He says, um, basically the silver squeeze was very strong in terms of number of sales, but not in terms of volume. It was about two months after that. It was when COVID hit that the volume went through the roof for silver. He says, but there was plenty of bars available until about two months later. And then the um, the the like if you if you were buying from a wholesaler, what you're really buying is the three month futures contract at that point. In other words, in order to get silver for you, they had to take a three month out contract to get delivery. Um, so that was the the strongest it's been. Um, he says silver right now is not quite there, but gold he says really is. It's getting extremely hard to to source gold. Um, you know, at at any wholesale level. And Ian, what are you seeing in terms of silver versus gold from the people you talk with right now? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to understand because there is a lot of gold about. All, all pretty ninety five percent of all the gold ever mined throughout human history is still in physical form, either bullion, coins, central bank deposits. Are it's still physically there? You would have thought they would have found some to plug the gap. But I guess the Bank of England dumped half of their gold. Canada dumped all of their gold. Um, uh, probably the US has dumped half of the 8,800 tons we're supposed to have had. So I don't think there's any slopping around that anybody's willing to drop into the system to increase the supply. So, yeah, ki kilos of gold. That's generally the, the most gold I sell is in kilos just to get the low premium for clients. Um, that's two to three weeks delay now from the direct from PAMP. And are you seeing any customers coming in selling gold or silver? Is it mostly buyers or, or are there any um, sellers showing up? I had one retail who sold 150 ounces of gold that a husband had bought in 2006. So they were quite happy with a gain they made. I tried to talk her out of it. She was adamant it was time to sell them. That's it on gold. Um, I think I've had 200 ounces of silver that people have asked me to buy, buy in the whole two years and three months we've been trading. And the only other thing I've done, I've done a few swaps where people want to up their ounces, swapping American Eagles into, into bullion. Apart from that, no one is selling. And 
everyone. I try to have a reasonable conversation with anybody who buys just to check they're buying the right product for the right reasons and the, the right time scales. This is a buying forever, um, or at least to what happens on the other side of the financial breakdown that we got to pass through. Um, so strong hands are buying a lot of silver. Okay, and Jim, uh, like to get your comment on that because obviously we see selling in the paper markets, and people are often wondering if there has been any selling on the physical level. Is that consistent with what you've been experiencing as well? Um, yeah, although again, since we're new um, and our products are new, we wouldn't necessarily expect to see a bunch of selling. But um, we have we have bought a bar off of a private client. Um, and then, like I said, we did that swap of 18,000 ounces, 18 bars. That was just a swap, physical for physical. Um, there is a lot of interest of that, swapping for physical for physical or, um, yeah, Kinesis KAG for, for physical. But, yeah, no, we haven't. We, we've we been asked by a couple dealers what our policy is. Um, you know, will we buy our own product back? And we said, of course we would. It's selling like crazy. Why wouldn't we? Um, and... Uh, but nobody's actually done it. Okay. And last question for you today, Jim, I know you've been involved with Kinesis. You mentioned it a couple of times. Could, could you share with folks what you're doing and how things are going with Kinesis and which, which segment you're involved with there? Well, I'm involved in a number of fronts, but, but we'll restrict our focus to silverback. Um, so Kinesis stood up a physical mint. So as people know, it's, it's, uh, it's NASA back digital currency. Um, the vaults have for silver, uh, 100 ounce bars, kilo bars, and 1,000 ounce bars. Um, you can redeem and collect those bars, um, 200 ounce minimum. But they also stood up a physical mint, um, you know, making products all the way down to fifth ounce coins they made for Citizens for Sound Money. Um, actually made the, the, the Joe Biden rounds for myself and a couple friends wanted to make those. That's not a silverback thing. Um, so they're crank they're cranking out the products. It's in Turkey, and they actually um, bought both a refinery and a mint, so they control the refinery, which is great news. Um, and and this this month they're moving them into a new facility so they can be combined together. And they're developing relationships, or they have relationships with miners to buy productions directly from the miners. So basically, they're really locking up the um, whole supply chain. Um, and and given what we've seen, what Ian's talking about especially europe electric electric prices um you know that's going to turn out to be a really good thing i think for kinesis um so and it's it's really neat to see um you know at the price that we've been selling these at there's a lot of com com uh, companies retailers that have bought them and, and they're selling them as generics so that's really great exposure for the system and you know that kinesis really is synonymous with physical gold and silver yeah, and I'll, I'll just butt in there the quality of the bars. I think we were the first to unveil them at the Silver Symposium um, in September, and people bought them over preference to other to to European big big name brand brand names. They're equal or better to Nadir, which is a, a, a another Turkish mint. The quality is excellent on them. The finish is great. Yeah, they're they're a, they're a smart bar. And I think they're just about to get ISO certified, aren't they, Jim? They are working on that. I think that process, they wanted to wait until after they move into the new facility to start that process, yeah. but they are working on ISO certifications. They do have some um, other certifications specific to Turkey, but but um, I know that's an important one, especially for the 100 ounce bars. Yeah. Well, it's certainly interesting and good to hear that things are moving along with Kinesis, obviously providing a means of using a digital transfer of silver and gold. And glad to hear that you've been getting involved with that and helping both of you guys helping to get those coins out there. And perhaps just before we wrap up, uh, Ian, could you let folks know if they have questions about anything you shared today or about gold and silver in general? What's the best way to find you and get more information? Yeah, sure. ArcSilver.com is our website. Uh, our, my our email is invest at ArcSilver, and my phone number is on the website. And that usually gets the quickest response. We're about two to three days on replying to emails at the moment. 
if you sign up for our notifications, we will do our best to get a weekly update on premiums. Well, I appreciate that. And again, thanks for everything you shared here. And Jim, could you let folks know where they can find out more about everything that you're doing right now at Silverback? Yeah, I, I was actually laughing at Ian's picture of a guy holding one of those thousand ounce bars in his hand. Um, some guys I was talking to said they had a contest and said, if you can lift the bar up with one hand, you can keep it. And one guy managed to turn it and he was getting his wrist under. They thought he was going to get it, but now it's kind of like picking up Mjolnir. You can kind of get it to move a little bit, but that's it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Not going to happen. Um, yeah, so silverbackpreciousmetals.com. Um, we just transitioned our website over to the, the new wholesale website. Um, I'm at Jim Forsyth5 on Twitter and at silverback underscore PM on Twitter. Um, those are both me, but one's representing the company. Um, my personal account, I, I talk a lot about the exploits of casting because that was kind of a personal investment I made. Yeah, and there's some of the nice products that you're making. So it's exciting to see what you've been up to and everything that you've been developing. And again, you can find Jim at silverbackpreciousmetals.com. And by the way, again, I'll mention that both of you will be at Silverfest 3 on Saturday, November 12th. So of course, you can uh, get information directly through their websites, but also interact with them at Silverfest. So Appreciate you guys joining me today to shed some light on what's happening in the market. We'll look forward to seeing you again in a couple of weeks and certainly interesting times out there. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for having us. Well, thank you to Ian and Jim for sharing everything they're seeing on the physical level of the silver market. I know it's not been the easiest summer for silver investors seeing the price on the lower side of the recent range. Although, again, we do continue to see strong conditions with premiums, physical buying, and everything else that they just shared. So hopefully you found that helpful at home. And again, if you would like to interact with any of them, we'll look forward to seeing you on Saturday, November 12th. Before we wrap up, we'd like to thank Raina Silver, who brought us today's video. Raina Silver, exploring three high-grade district-scale assets, two in Mexico at Gigi and Batopilas, and also at Medicine Springs, where... They have just started their drilling program. In 2021, they did a Jasperoid study that Dr. Peter McGaw, who is quite well known for his geology, especially finding silver in Mexico, mentions. The result of this selective sampling program are some of the best I've seen from CRD Jasperoids and appear to support our thesis. And what we see at Medicine Springs is high-level leakage from a multi-stage mineralization center at depth, as his daughter Lauren McGaw has mentioned in one of her presentations. What they like about the Jasperoids is that that provides a window into what's going on at depth. And when they did some testing, they found zoning of copper, lead, zinc, and silver mineralization. And they came back with silver samples ranging from 400 to over 1,200 grams per ton silver. So they are there in Nevada continuing to drill. You can see some of the targets that they're looking to drill at in this map here. And you can find out more about this going to RainaSilver.com and see the full presentation, but certainly a lot going well at Raina Silver, and I appreciate them bringing us today's video. Go take a look if you are looking for silver exposure. And with that said, going to wrap up for today, but thanks again for joining us, and I will see you again tomorrow. 